the mainstream media told us we're allowed to have one reaction to the Columbine massacre, and that is, what a terrible tragedy. These were terrible kids. They listened to Marilyn Manson, and they went and killed people. If you have any other point of view on that massacre than that, you're wrong. you must love the killing of children. One of the most controversial violent video games in recent memory was created by a 25-year-old Colorado man named Danny Ladoni. His game is called Super Columbine Massacre RPG. You may have guessed that it is based on the murder of 13 people at Columbine High School in Colorado in 1999. When a lot of people ask the question, why did they do it? Why did Eric and Dylan shoot up their school? They, they don't actually want the answer. It's a very unique example of how you can use violence to express a different type of message or to express a message at all. I don't think a video game is the way to go if you want to educate the public. A lot of people wrote that there was no game that could be made about Columbine that could be legitimate. You don't gain appreciation for the tragedy by repeating it and participating in a recreation yourself and taking the role of the murderers. The controversy should be that there aren't more games that are as demanding and as artistically innovative. Klebold and Harris literally trained on Doom uh, to do what they did. The Columbine killers were pegged as Doom players, and Doom was, you know, summarily taken to the mat for representations of violence. There are reports that 25-year-old Kim Veer Gill enjoyed playing a video game based on the Columbine High School massacre. You don't feel any responsibility for what happened in Montreal, even though this gunman played your game. I hope prosecutors are able to find something to charge you with after the slaughter in Canada. They assume it must be the video games that set them off, rather than looking at all the other things that it could have been. The school shooters train literally on video games to do this. What about all the kids out there who didn't say that it had to do with a video game, who picked up a gun and smoked a few cops. The Slam Dance Festival. Now it's making news because it's just cut one video game from its program. It's not the act that gets you in trouble, but it's the cover-up. Of the development finals, six of the teens pulled their games out of the festival in protest. We're just learning how to use games as an expressive medium. So our withdrawal in many ways is a teaching moment. I would so much rather everyone was talking about the Columbine game because we showed it, not because we didn't. If someone were to take those tapes that those kids made and made a documentary film, it would never be pulled. Why should Slam Dance exist if what it's going to do when it holds its guerrilla game maker competition pull out anything remotely guerrilla? Whenever youth culture adopts kind of a new genre, it's viewed as potentially scary by older people. That was true with comic books. It was true with rock and roll. It's now true with games. It's time that gamers get together. It's time that we, instead of just going on message boards and decrying politicians and anti-gamers activists, it's time that we got together and changed things. It's a kind of topic that nobody thought a game could tackle, except, you know, somebody had to do it.